Noel Plum 99 reminded me of the existence of this apologist, Frank Turek, and did a response to one of his podcasts, but I think it ran a bit long. Well, I'm sorry this video's gone on for as long as it has. I invite you, I invite you, I challenge you to watch the original video and see if you could have made a response that was any fucking shorter than this one. Well, thank you for watching if you've got to the end. Challenge accepted. And then I wanted to cover the issue of uh, do atheists just lack a belief in God? Let me just say a few words about this because I don't think it's a very good way to describe atheism. Because if atheism is merely a lack of belief in God, then atheism is just a claim about the atheist state of mind. It's not a claim about God's existence. Why is that a problem? Let's say the folks that call themselves atheists who simply lack a belief in God but don't affirm God's non-existence refer to themselves as agnostics instead. Christopher Hitchens would be an agnostic, Richard Dawkins would be an agnostic. Would that make you feel better? It wouldn't change the substance or the force of their arguments one bit. Now I think being an atheist means slightly more than a lack of belief in God. I think it also means a lack of a suspicion that there is a God. If you're not convinced there's a God but you suspect there is one, I don't think I'd call you an atheist. Atheist. Regardless, I don't think you have to affirm the non-existence of God in order to be an atheist. It's basically saying, the atheist is saying, I, he's saying, I'm, I'm psychologically, or I'm not psychologically convinced that God exists. Well, so what? So, leave us the fuck alone. Stop trying to convert us and get your biblical shit out of our public schools and bedrooms. Frank seems to misunderstand the purpose of expressing our disbelief in God. While there are plenty of atheists who want to convince people that God does not exist, many of us are not trying to do that. A lot of us are simply responding to attempts by theists to convert us to their religion, or to force their religious injunctions upon us via legislation. In expressing our disbelief and explaining why we don't believe, we're simply saying we don't buy what you're peddling, and we are under no obligation to follow your orders. This claim that atheists just lack a belief in God is that the atheist is really trying to Avoid the burden of proof. The burden of proof lies with the person trying to do the convincing. If I'm not trying to convince you that God doesn't exist, then I don't have to prove that God doesn't exist. However, if you want to convince me, then you do carry a burden of proof. And the reason you don't like how some of us define atheism is because you are trying to avoid that burden. But that's just not so. Why? Because atheists are always trying to give alternatives to... The theistic worldview. They try and say, well, maybe the quantum vacuum brought the universe into existence. No, it's not the case that atheists are always trying to give alternative explanations for the universe's existence. Saying that you're an atheist does not imply any further claims or beliefs about the origin of the universe. A person can be an atheist and simply have no idea why the universe exists. Sometimes atheists do attempt to give alternative explanations, but when they do this, they happily accept that they have the burden of proving that those explanations are correct. There are many scientists who have various ideas about how the universe came to be, and they eagerly pursue evidence for their ideas. And if they find evidence, they eagerly present it. But this is a separate issue. Atheism does not entail belief in any particular theory about the origin of the universe, and it certainly doesn't obligate atheists to prove any of those theories. Positive beliefs that atheistic materialism is the best way to explain reality. In other words, atheists don't lack a belief in materialism. They're not skeptical of materialism. They think that a materialism is true. I don't. I'm not a materialist. I don't believe that all substance is material because I don't see what sense it makes to conceptually separate substance into the categories of material substance and immaterial substance. I don't think this is a meaningful distinction. I don't understand what it means to say that substance is material or immaterial or both or neither. There is substance, that's pretty clear, but once we start dividing substance into these fundamentally different categories, I think we go off the rails into incoherence. I make no claims about material or immaterial substance because I don't even understand what that distinction even fucking means. But again, as with theories about the origin of the universe, this is a separate issue from atheism. Many atheists are materialists, but atheists don't have to be materialists. They can be idealists or even dualists. What atheists need to do is they need to make a positive case that only material things exist. No, only materialists have to make that case. Being an atheist does not obligate you to make a case for materialism. Objective morality, where does that come from? How about evil? Neither exist. You see, atheism ultimately is self-defeating. Materialistic atheism. It's self-defeating. There's no way to know atheism is true if it really is true. 
Because if atheism is really true, then we're not really reasoning anyway, we're just reacting. So it's a common assertion that if there is no God, we can't know anything to be true. Well, I don't really see how the existence of God makes us any less epistemically fallible. Something that both atheists and theists agree on is that human beings are fallible and we can be wrong about things without even knowing that we are wrong about them. Since that's the case, I think we should view as many of our beliefs as we can to be provisional. Even if there is a God, one should still be open to considering the possibility that one's belief in God may be incorrect. Because God or no God, we have a strong tendency to fool ourselves. I think we should be very careful about convincing ourselves that we have some incontrovertible knowledge about the world which we need never question.